am Dora Major. I co-own Blue Cafe Plus. My partner Anna, he created this whole idea, this whole roastery back in 2018 with the aim to source the best quality of coffee and to do kind of like an artisan roast as well. Anna has been in the coffee industry for 17 years. He's run many coffee shops before and that's where the whole idea came from that why not control the quality a lot more and control what beans I'm serving and how we can do things a little bit differently. So at the beginning they were experimenting a lot with like new lots that no one really heard about, like different countries that are now quite popular, but back then they weren't super, super popular and it was kind of a risk to start roasting coffees from those origins. Um, but I think with the right quality control and things like that, you can really achieve a great product. And obviously with the transparency that you get from importers, exporters, or from direct relationships from those countries, you can achieve something really good. And my journey is a little bit different <laughs> from that. So I used to be in an office job. I used to do the nine to five, which I realized that it's not really for me. And I tried to get into the coffee business a lot more because I was always interested in it. Obviously, I love coffee. Um, yeah, I think it started when I was a kid and my dad, I remember, he used to drink those. I'm European, so we used to drink espressos and I was just always like sneaking behind him and getting my little sugar cube actually and just dipped into his espresso and I was just actually sipping it. <laughs> he really hated it because it made his espresso sweeter. <laughs> but that's how it started. I went to Colombia to do a coffee roasting course actually. And it was very intense. It was a two week course. And by the end of it, I was roasting for the clients there. I traveled throughout Colombia visiting farms and that gave me lots of confidence with the product. And I think it's really important to understand like where it's coming from. And this is how you can understand the processes, the challenges they face. The education is lacking for the end consumers. They don't understand where the product is coming from. And that was my aim to, to connect the two things. Here we have a gas machine, so you can control the quality a lot more and it's more manual than the other machines. So that was the whole idea to kind of like connect the farmers, the source of the coffee with the end product and with the end users. And that's why we try to aim for sourcing the best quality, the direct trade, the most direct trade as we can to the end users. We have a 12 kilo Dietrich roaster machine. It is a gas machine, so it's very, it's very an artisan and manual process how you can control the roast all the way through. Um, so it is a lot more when you're cooking, for example, it's when you cook with gas, you can adjust the heat very quickly. So if you see that something rises and something doesn't look quite right, you can immediately react to it and then control your roast throughout. So we measure the density, the humidity, and based on that, we do like very small adjustments on the profile. But we tend to use like one profile per bean that we created for it. And we use Cropster, which is very, very reliable source to make things right. And because it's a manual artist, artisan roast, and as you can see, she's always there <laughs> and she always needs to focus on it. And every minute, basically, she needs to adjust the temperature as she sees the chart, how it goes. I think there's never like a perfect roast. You always have like some things to adjust, like slightly things. But the aim is like not to be out of your current profile a lot and not to be out of that range of like flavor notes that you want to achieve from your being. So every
every time I do a cupping, I make it public. I know that people can be subjective with it, so that's why I think the more the merrier in this case. And I always have a plan in my head, like what I want to achieve from this cupping, like what beans I'm looking for, what you need, because you have a selection of coffee, so you need to be smart about it. Like you need to have like different kinds of coffee in it, trying to cover like different uh, demographics as well. So I know that some people are very experimental, others they like to keep it a bit traditional. But basically we always do blind cupping as well. We never see what we're tasting actually. We always put our own roasts as well into the cupping. But sometimes I can be quite biased or I know Sharon the roast. I know what she likes and what she's into. So I immediately know what she's gonna say yes to. But I like to, you know, listen to the crowd as well, who's gonna eventually consume the product. This coffee that they roast now, it's not gonna be consumed tomorrow by anyone. And I don't recommend getting it consumed tomorrow. So we like to do it the week after, always, at least a week, because we don't recommend using the beans at least for a few days for filter. And if you use it for espresso, at least, at least a week or even more weeks. And we like to cup it when the final product gets out and when people drink it as well. My aim is and my dream, like literally, is to have direct trade with all the sources that we import coffees from and to get it like straight from the farm. And that was my objective when I joined the company and that's why it's really my dream. But, and <laughs> there's a big but. It's unfortunately impossible, like in a lot of cases, and for a small roastery. Maybe in a bigger scale it is possible from every single source, but unfortunately it comes down to the demographics, political situation. I think the key here is to work with importers or exporters that you see that they do the right thing, and that's what I, I only do because I I just don't want to be just one of them. We're not the big guys. We want to give back to the community. So the only way to do it is by working with these importers who have the reports, who are super transparent, and who you believe here. Yeah. Since I joined the company, I could successfully buy some beans direct from the farm. Uh, so this is actually a natural hybrid between Tipica and Bourbon. It is a process that is like half anaerobic, half aerobic, and it's a little fermented process, but I like when they don't go crazy on the fermentation process, so they don't really like dilute the flavor. They just kind of enhance it. I think it changes, to be honest. Like, I started with washed coffee because I think that was more common back in the days and then I think natural became a big hit which I love but you know it's changing or always so it's very hard to just choose one and I think yeah first I was kind of like a washed process girl then I went into the naturals the funky notes nowadays I tend to enjoy the fermented more yeah, I'm still kind of like debating in my head as well. And I just tend to go with like, from different origins, I think I prefer like different things. So even from like different farms, I would prefer different things. And I think it, for me personally, it comes down to my like morning coffee. Like in the morning, maybe I tend to like more towards the washed coffees. And in the afternoon, something to pick me up, I tend to enjoy more like funkier notes and something you know that when you feel like eating some sweets but if you have like a very funky or very sweet naturally sweet coffee that would satisfy me as well and i think maybe that's why i tend to enjoy them more in the afternoons but yeah it's a very it's a very good question actually to truly get like a coffee beans flavor you need a little delusion to taste every single like flavor notes and that's why I love the V60 brewing method.
people are very collaborative with each other. And I think that openness and because there's no right or wrong, people like to educate the other and they share their tips, they share their knowledge. And that's what I really loved about it. It's a very, very inclusive community. It's very laid back as well. It's very open. And yeah, I, I've only had, to be honest, like good experiences with any people I've met in the industry. Some disadvantages probably is the changes, like all the changes in the world, like political, uh, economical, and all those things. And it starts from the farm that now they have to face with the climate change. They have to come up with different products almost to kind of like keep a big chunk of their crop and not lose the whole thing. And for us as well, the economical situation is probably not the best <laughs> place where we're at currently. And that is just hard to kind of like push it on to the next one. And then eventually it's gonna hit the end consumer. And I think it's just getting harder to educate them about the specialty product and why it's good for you to purchase this. And I think that educational piece as well, it's, it's very hard to educate a mess of the people. I know that a lot of them now understand it, the difference between the two, but it's very, very hard still, I think, to, to educate the mess. So I'm trying to be zero waste as well uh, in the roastery. So we just redesigned our packaging. Now it's fully compostable. We don't have to deal with the labels, which I think for us that was the biggest like general waste. And the, obviously the biggest waste in a roastery is your coffee chops, which I think now I cannot see it here. <laughs> because so usually what we do I partnered up with some um, animal farms, you know, there's a lot of them scattered around in London. And they use it for animal bedding, they use it for composting. It's actually a very nutritious, like, soil as well for your plants or for your compost. And I'm really glad to say that now we don't have waste. The only general waste that you can see is like the small one that basically fills up every month. month. And all the chops, they come and collect, or we give them out, we drive it to their farms, and then, yeah, they use it for animals. And I think a lot of roasteries, that's what they should do as well, that we shouldn't waste, because actually it's like a big waste of, like, that you produce every single week. And I think that's how you can be a bit different as well. And I think there are like lots of other ways you can use it. And I can see that now people started using it for different things. But I think that's what yeah, everyone should do as well and try to be a bit more environmentally conscious.